Welcome to the course iOS development. My name is Mark Lassoff and I'm going to be your instructor. We're going to start in this first segment by hitting the ground running and creating an actual iOS application that will test using the iOS emulator. So I've already loaded the environment for creating iOS applications and that's called Xcode. If you don't have that yet on your Mac, you can get it free from the App Store by clicking the Apple and going to your App Store and downloading it from there. It's a free download. So once you're in here, you're going to choose File and, oops, let me get to Xcode, File, New, and you're going to choose New Project. That'll get you to a screen that looks like this. Now you want to make sure you're using the most current version of Xcode to, for your screens to look exactly like mine. Otherwise, they may look similar, but may have some differences. So you'll notice here we have several templates for new projects. The first section is for iOS projects. And the second section is for Mac OS X projects. We use the same environment for both types of projects. If you've taken the Objective-C course with me or the C course with me, we did command line tools using the Mac OS X environment. Well, we're going to be in iOS this time, so we're going to make an iOS application, and there's several different types. Now, we'll go over a couple of these over the course. However, for right now, we're going to start with a simple single view application. A view is just that. It's one screen in your application or one view into your application. So make sure that's selected. You're going to click Next, and now it wants the product name. The product name is the name of your application itself. Now, by the way, I recommend that you watch this video possibly on one screen and follow the steps while pausing the video and then watch the next section of the video and go ahead and do those steps. That's the best way to learn this stuff. All right, so product name, let's go ahead and choose uh, L2P Hello World, L2P for Learn to Program. The company identifier is kind of like, if you're familiar with Java, the package that your application is going to live in, only it's used system-wide with Apple. So it's important that you have the uh, company identifier listed. Um, we're going to go ahead and do com.learntoprogram.ios. And that'll make our whole bundle identifier for this particular application, com.learntoprogram.ios.l2p hello world. I'm not going to use a class prefix, but if we did, all of our classes that we wrote would be prepended with this prefix. I'm also not going to use a storyboard. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but I am going to use automatic reference counting. Now, automatic reference counting is new with the fifth edition of iOS, iOS 5. And it allows the um, environment in the background to count how many references you make to objects and dereference them as necessary. This is a huge savings and it makes it much easier for those of you who are not traditionally C programmers who are going into iOS. I always leave this checked. We're going to click next to go on to the next screen. And now it's simply going to ask, where do we want to save our files? We can save our files anywhere that makes sense. So I'm on the desktop. I'm going to put a folder here. And I'm going to call this folder iOS course files, just like that. And then within that folder, it's going to go ahead and save all of the files necessary for this particular Hello World application that we're creating. Now here there's an option for source control, and those of you who've worked in larger programming shops have probably used source control before. This versions your, product, your project automatically, so this way if you make a mistake and need to go back, you can go ahead and go back in time, so to speak, with the different versions of the software that you've written. We're not going to create the local Git repository for source control. That's something you can experiment with on your own once you're in the production cycle. All right, so we've gotten here and we've created our application and we have the application summary here. So the application summary is a good place to start and take a look at what are the different pieces of an iOS application. So we can see up here some of the information we've already entered, our bundle identifier, the version of the software, the build version, what device we're targeting. We're just going to target iPhone, so I'm going to change that. The deployment target, the portrait and landscape left and landscape right, the orientations that we are targeting, 
the icons for the retina display and the launch images, which we'll go over in a bit. So this is kind of just a summary of your application and how it works. Now, originally we created this application for both iPhone and iPad. So there's two different what are called nib files in here. I'm actually gonna leave the one for iPad alone for right now. And we're just gonna deal with the one for iPhone. So this nib file is someplace where we're gonna actually draw all of the controls that are part of our application. We then have two files that control this particular view. So this viewcontroller.h and viewcontroller.m file are both related to these nib files. The nib files are just an XML file behind the scenes. You can actually see the XML, I'll show you that in a bit, um, that controls the layout. The view controller is where we write code. Now the app delegates are where we can enter the application lifecycle at different points and write some code. So for example, here's, an app, here's a method called application will resign active. I should really say task because that's the objective C term for a method. Method is a Java term. All right, so this is sent when the application is about to move from active to inactive state. So we can actually write code here that's relevant when the application is about to move from active to inactive. And you'll see other delegates like application did enter background, application will enter foreground, application did become active, application will terminate. Now don't worry as if you look at these different file templates, if all of the methods that I show don't exist on yours or you have methods that are different than mine, Apple tends to tweak which methods are part of the template with each release of Xcode. So don't worry too much if the same methods don't show on your machine and on my machine. Now for the view controller, this is the life cycle of this individual view, right? This individual screen that we're seeing here for the iPhone. So here in the view controller, you see things like did receive memory warning, which could happen at any time, but then we have the life cycle. View did load, view did unload, view will appear animated, view will disappear animated, should auto rotate to interface orientation. So that's basically the life cycle of an individual view. And if we want to, for example, run some code when the view has loaded but doesn't hasn't appeared yet, we'll go ahead and run it right there. And even there's a comment in the template which says, do any additional setup after loading the view, typically, typically from a nib, which are XIB files. They used to be called NIB in a much earlier version of iOS. We call their XIB files now, but we still pronounce it nib. So if you want to sound like a pro, call them a nib. Don't call them a jib or something or how you pronounce it with an X. All right. So let's go ahead and we're only going to do the iPhone view for right now. With our iPhone view, actually, I don't want to do this in a secondary window. We'll just go here. We're going to go ahead and put in our controls and make it very easy. Now, for right now, see these three view buttons? I'm gonna go ahead and make the left-hand view disappear and make, bring up the right-hand panel, because that's the one that's relevant right now. And you'll see on the right-hand panel this objects list towards the bottom. I'm gonna give that a little more real estate here on the screen. And as you slide through here, you'll see different controls that are part of the iOS operating system. We'll go through a bunch of these over the space of the course, but for right now, we're only looking for two. The first one we're looking for is a label. So what I'm gonna do is take it from here and drag it onto the surface of my application and put it about there. Now you'll notice when you're in the middle, you get a dotted blue line, or when you hit either edge, you get a dotted blue line. And those are just to help you visually line up the components of your view or your application. So I'm gonna leave it right there. And then I'm gonna grab one other component, this round rectangle button and I'm gonna drop that right below the label like that. Don't worry if you don't get it in the exact same place I do, as long as you're close, that'll be just fine. All right, so here's the label and here's the button. Now, I wanna set some properties of the label, so I'm gonna click on the label once and I'm gonna go up here. Now, up here we've got several different what are called inspectors. These are context sensitive, meaning these will change based on what is selected. So we're gonna choose the attributes inspector and you're gonna see now we see the different attributes of the label. So I'm gonna remove the text label. I don't want that text to be there. And I'm gonna go ahead and center the text within the label. I could change the font here. Let's just change the color just for fun. 
So let's get something like a deep red there. I like a kind of a deep red. That's kind of pink. There we go. It's got a deep red. So that'll be the color of our text. Now we're going to have the text appear when the button is clicked. I'm not going to make any other changes here. And the button, we just want to put some text on the button. So I'm going to double click it. Now you'll notice, by the way, that here your attributes inspector now has the attributes of the button. We're not going to change any of them because we can just type what we want here. Let's say, uh, say hello. So that's now the text on the button. Now it looks like our labels disappeared, but it just doesn't have any text in it. It's right there. While we're here, let's go ahead and stretch the label out so it hits both of the margin lines on the left and right side. So this way it stretches all the way across so we can accommodate a bigger text message. All right, so that takes care of setting up the visual part of our interface. Now, the problem is, not that it's a problem, but the fact of the matter is at this point, this interface, which is saved in this nib file, is not aware of the view controller file, which can, is going to contain the code for the interface. Likewise, the view controller file is not aware of what's in the nib. So we have to tie the two together. Now, there's an easy way to do this and a more complicated way. You're going to have to learn both because in some instances, the easy way won't work. And when you have to edit these connections between these two files, you're going to have to do it the more difficult way. For right now, since this is your first iOS application, we'll do this the easy way. Now, I know we're dealing with fairly limited screen real estate here. So I'm again going to hide the view on the left side and I'm going to open what's called the assistant editor. The assistant editor puts two editors side by side and you can see now I can see both my nib file, I can see the design and I can see the view controller dot H file for L2P hello world. Now, when you have multiple view controllers, this can get confusing, but we have a single view application, so we just have one view controller. Now, what I'm going to do while holding the control key is I'm going to drag from the label into the viewcontroller.h file, and I'll see a message that says insert outlet or outlet collection. I'm going to release, and I'm going to get this dialog box. Now, an outlet is exactly what it sounds like. It's where information coming out from the file or out from the code is displayed. So it's an outlet. So we'll call this LBL greeting. We'll leave the other options alone. It is a type UI label. The storage will be strong. I'm going to click connect. Now let me show you all the different things that have happened. We have a property statement here. So that's doing a couple of different jobs. One, it's declaring the reference to the LBL greeting, right? We have an asterisk there. So in C, we know that means that this is a pointer or reference. The type is a UI label. It's also declared as an IB outlet, meaning that it's an outlet so information can come through it and be displayed in the interface. Strong, non-atomic are the memory selections, and it's a property. So we have property, strong, non-atomic, IB outlet, UI label, LBL greeting. Perfect. So that's exactly what we want. But it also did a couple of other things. Before we come back here, I'm going to turn off the assistant editor, and let's take a look at the viewcontroller.m file. So the viewcontroller.m file, if we look, we've now synthesized LBL greeting, and we've gone ahead and on view did unload, we set the reference to LBL greeting to nil. So we've basically deallocated the memory for that particular object when the view unloads. That all was done for us automatically. So this actually saved us a whole bunch of work. I'm going to go ahead and close that up. Let's go back to our assistant editor view. So I'll bring up the nib again. And assistant editor. There we go. And we'll get this left-hand column out of the way. Now, this button is going to cause an action to occur. It's not an outlet, but it's an action. And that's because something happens when the button is clicked. So you notice when I choose action from the connection drop-down list, this dialog box changes a little bit. So we're going to rename the action, um, or we're going to name the action display greeting. Now the event here is what event are we responding to? 
So touch up inside means the fingers come up inside the button. So basically we've clicked. That's the event we want. We don't really need any arguments here, so I'm gonna choose none. We don't need any arguments coming to this function that's gonna be created. Type is ID is fine. We're gonna click connect. So now we get a function prototype here. So we have the minus, which shows that this is a instance level function. It returns an IB action and it's called display greeting. So also if we look now in the implementation file, so that's the .m file. By the way, you'll notice some of these are gray. That just simply means they haven't been saved. You can hit the command S to save any of the files at any time. If you build, they'll be saved automatically. If we look here in the view controller.m, there's now a stub for a task called display greeting. So here we could write our code. So this is the callback function that's going to run automatically when the button's clicked. So we have everything wired up here to the nib. So we can write our code here in the view controller. So what we want to happen is we want when the button is clicked LBL greeting to display some text. So we'll go ahead and simply write some code. LBL greeting set text and then it wants an NS string. So let's go ahead and write our NS string. Hello from learn to program.tv. All right, so we've got here a message to LBL greeting. It's called set text that passes it an NS string. Hello from learn to program.tv. Now this display greeting runs whenever the button here is clicked. All right, so we are about ready to test our application. We're going to test it on the iPhone simulator. So I'll select that here from the drop down, and I'm going to click run. Now, the first time that you run, it pre compiles a bunch of heading files. So it takes a little bit longer than subsequent executions of the build. Still, it's not too long, and eventually the iPhone simulator will appear. And once the iPhone simulator appears, we can actually test our application. Now, I should note that this is a simulator, not an emulator, meaning it's not building an actual iPhone image on your desktop. That's the way Android works, but iPhone works a little differently. It uses a simulator, and when you need to test, you can test on the simulator, or if you have an iOS developer account through Apple, then you can test on an actual device. It looks like it's taking its time the first time here, and then soon we'll actually see the results. So there it goes. Looks like it's about to run our application. It's asking me for a password for my system, and I gave it that. So now we should see our Hello World application. All right, so I'm going to click Say Hello, and there's Hello from Learn to Program.tv in that deep red color that we selected. So we have our first interactive application with iOS built in Xcode. This one's pretty easy, and it gives you an idea of what the process is like for building Xcode applications. Thank you